Good morning everybody this is Sangeeta Sixena editor Aviation and Defense Universe getting you live from the Dubai Air Show we are here at the US Partnership Pavilion it's the morning of the day 3 and we have with us two gentlemen who are going to enlighten us absolutely about all that is happening for the generations to come we are here at Colman Worldwide and have with us the head of Colman Worldwide Tom Colman and along with him we have my Bluefield who's a NASA astronaut and i'm sure this is going to be the most exciting conversation ever so tom and mike welcome to adu's chat room and tom we begin with you so tom how does it feel to be here at the by air show coming with an endeavor oh uh, so jee this is our company's 28th year 28th year organizing the us pavilion at the at the dubai air show uh and uh, over the decades we've learned that uh Uh, it's not only about presenting the most, uh, the largest, and the most beautiful pavilion at the show, but it's to have an appreciation for some of the challenges that our customers are are having. And one of those challenges that the U.S. industry and the global industry has is workforce uh, development. A uh, pipeline of engineers coming up uh, to help fill the slots to to make the aircraft, to make the parts and components, and to uh, keep us flying. And one way that our company is uh, addressing that problem is by motivating children, uh, high school children, students uh, and to into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math and to get them excited about our industry. And uh, in 2019 with a good friend Al Warden who was flew the Apollo 15 uh, command module Endeavor to the moon, uh, we founded the Endeavor scholarship program whereby we uh take kids from different countries to uh space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. And so that's what uh we're one of the things we're doing this week in addition to having uh the largest group at the show. I brought a good friend and Apollo uh I'm sorry NASA astronaut Mike Bloomfield uh here he'll tell you a little bit about his background and uh, and what he's doing uh, but he's our goodwill ambassador to the US Pavilion and our guest of honor for the Endeavor scholarship. So Mike uh, over to you. Thanks Tom. Yeah, so the Endeavor scholarship as uh, as Tom mentioned has two tenets. One is that we want to target the uh, the 15 to 18 year old kids, the kids that are still trying to make a decision about where they want to go in life. And the second one is we want to make it international. And so that's what the uh, the scholarship focuses on and the, the, when we focus on those two areas we're trying to get them into the STEM as Tom said, the, the scientific, the technical, the engineering and the math side of the world. And our job is to excite them about those things and use space as the conduit to make that happen. And so every year we fly teams from their various countries to Huntsville, Alabama. We actually first fly to Washington DC, spend 48 hours in Washington DC visiting the Smithsonian and also visiting Al Warden who had the vision to start this scholarship. Um, he's from the Apollo era, Apollo 15 where they They flew around the moon, and we found it, and they sent some people down to the surface of the moon. And so they get to visit Al's grave as well as the Smithsonian, and then we send them out to Huntsville, Alabama, for four days, while where they spend some time uh, scuba diving and zip lining, and we're going to work together as a team, as an international team. And uh, does it also mean that you get them to uh, go inside the uh, space stations and get let them get a feel of everything? and uh, try some simulation and things like that it does absolutely mean. that's a really important part of the entire thing is to make it operational um we want to make sure that we keep it exciting and Huntsville does a great job of that with their space station mockups their shuttle mockups um of uh, teaching the students how to work in an operational environment using the STEM background right and uh, you know since you said it's going to be global which are the other countries where you are planning this sort of an endeavor so last year we had uh, we had students from australia from france we had them from the uae and we had them from the united states so we had four teams last year that gathered um at in Huntsville, Alabama in July to to do the uh, the, the camp Uh, next year we're hoping to double that to 8 so we're going to include include uh, students from the UAE again Poland and then we also have them from Australia UK and France I'm still looking for a couple more after that so right I Singapore and Chile where we're going I hope Latin you America add well. I hope you add India to we're the list We're thinking about India we'll talk about that absolutely <laughs> you've got some smart kids in India we'd yes. love to we'd love to move there absolutely absolutely yeah. and what is the methodology is there a tie up you have with the country first and then with the schools or are you interacting with the schools directly and uh, tying up with them So you know, we 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 have the program in place but the one thing we cannot do is we cannot 
ourselves select students from the, the local country. So we always partner with somebody. In this case, the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center helped us select uh, four students. We're working with the UAE Space Agency. Over in Bahrain, the Space Agency is selecting us. Down in Australia, the Industry Association. So in every country, we need a partner to help us select the kids. And it's usually done through a competition. So we have some really quality uh, students coming up to the program. And at that time, we have we have the final interviews with the a global team of, uh, uh, of uh, evaluators and uh, and away we go but uh, uh, the only thing that, that uh, again we, we really need help locally and if we were to ever do something in India we need to find the right partner to help us select these uh, uh, these kids because US industry right now US industry is funding this uh, whether it's the US pavilion itself or other uh, corporate sponsors that get involved uh, it's we, we have the money we just need help uh, uh, finding the, the students. So there's no financial uh, liability on the school or the children Negative, themselves? Zero, zero. This is an all expense paid trip for these uh, students, even if they need to have their uh, visas paid for or a passport. We take care of all those things. No hindrances uh, uh, at all. But that's wonderful. I think that's something which needs to be told, you know. I yeah, think that's you. very nice. Yeah. And uh, in addition to that, the program, I think, began last year? or uh... It began, we now launched it in 2019, but COVID stopped us until 2021. And so in 22 and 23, we've had uh, uh, 32 students go through the program so far from eight different countries. So as uh, Colonel Bloomfield mentioned, next year we're going to double that. So for the summer of 24, there will be 32 students from eight different countries. Right, and uh, when you talk about training the trainer, which is the teacher who comes along with them, what is the program like? Yeah, that's a good point, because not only do the kids go through a program, but the teachers, uh, the chaperones, are also going through a, a, a program on how to use space to become better STEM teachers. So they have a full program of five days themselves that they, they're learning how to, from each other around the world. This is what I do in Brazil, this is what I do in the uh, UK, et cetera, et cetera. Really a great program. Wonderful. I think that was just wonderful. And you know, so much that uh, the world should be knowing about how to groom the next generation and make it focus towards the sciences, especially the space. And uh, gentlemen, I think, uh, you know, I would really want to know one last thing from each of you. Such a program should be a legacy program. So what have you planned for this legacy? You know, how do you plan, let's say, 30 years hence, the scholarship still continues. Well, we don't have enough time to tell you the 30-year plan, but it, trust me, we have it. We have ways of expanding this program. These students are now ambassadors. They're all going back to their classes and their friends and telling them uh, about the program. And, and there's no greater legacy uh, example than, than what this guy's gone through from Gemini, Saturn, Gemini, Apollo, Shut also, this is a living legacy uh, program. Go ahead, Mike. No, and the only thing that I add is that one of our dreams and hopes is that these kids are involved with the Endeavor Scholarship. And if you look at the name Endeavor, it has a long legacy of being involved with sailing ships from Europe and exploration. To the, it was part of the Apollo program. It was very much part of the shuttle program of the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And there's also a, 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 a SpaceX Dragon out there called Endeavor now. And so our hope and goal is that when we go to Mars someday, there will be a ship called Endeavor, and on that ship will be kids from the Endeavor Scholarship. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful note to break on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen.